Now, we have to say certain things about sex. First of all, sex is not evil. It's good. We have to clear away that misunderstanding. God created man and woman sexual beings. And after he checked on everything he created, he said it was all very good, including sex. One of the big problems in church is we're just not honest about sex. We're ashamed about it. We're prudish. And we encourage problems by that attitude. Um, I would say every form of compulsive sex aberration is demonic, without exception. Masturbation, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, effeminacy, and all sorts of horrid perversions that we won't talk about. I would say every one of those is demonic. Now, you don't have to feel ashamed, but you do need to resolve your problem. Number five, lusts. Now, we could have included sex under that heading, but it's such a distinctive area, I kept it separate. Uh, perverted desires and appetites. All right. I believe all appetites initially were healthy. But by sin and demonic power, they've been perverted to become unhealthy and destructive. 1 John 2.16 speaks about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. There is demonic power that controls eyes. Some men have to look at women in a special way. They're absolutely incapable of not doing that. That's a demon that's focused in their eyes. Um, as I've said already, gluttony is a very clear example of a perverted appetite. I had a woman once who traveled 70 miles in a snowstorm to Chicago to be delivered. She was the daughter of a Pentecostal pastor. Like many people in that situation, she'd rebelled against her parents and their religion married an unsaved man and ended up miserable. She had three children. She came and got delivered from the, the demon of gluttony. And she said to me afterwards, Mr. Prince, no one can tell me this isn't real. It's just as real as having a baby and rather like it. And I've had three. And then she told me she was so compulsive in her gluttony that she would take food off her children's plate and eat it, even though she knew they needed it more than she did. You see, let's talk about addictions for a moment. Addictions are, grow on frustrations. They're branches on a trunk. And if you merely deal with the addiction, you haven't solved the problem. Take alcohol and gluttony. One woman is a Episcopalian. Her husband runs around with other women, doesn't care for her, doesn't give her enough money, so on. All right. She gets frustrated. She's got to get some release. She walks across the living room to the cocktail cabinet, becomes an alcoholic. The other woman is Church of God, okay? Her husband does exactly the same. But for that woman to get to the cocktail cabinet would be a lengthy journey. So where does she go? To the kitchen and opens the refrigerator. But she becomes a foodaholic. But the, the difference is minimal, really. And in either case, to help them, you've got to deal with the basic frustration, which is their attitude toward their husband. 